Mike Gundy stands and delivers yet another media gem, and he's right. We have been exposed, I'd say, for quite some time now. But is something that's been very concerning now no longer a cause for concern? You are Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen. We're available on all of your podcasting platforms, visually as well on YouTube. Find me personally on X at All Day State. Today, we are partially brought to you by 5 Hour Energy. Go to 5hourenergy.com and use promo code Locked On CFB to receive 20% off your order. Go to 5 Hour Energy today to get the best pick me up in the game. Meanwhile, we have all received a pick me up from our head man once again, Mike Gundy. His press conference was a thing of beauty. This is a, a thing of orange gold. Mike Gundy has never been this way with the media. So this is absolutely phenomenal. Instead of getting a few nuggets here and there a year, this is back to back to back weeks of Mike Gundy just telling it like it is and giving us the 100% reality of what's going on inside his locker room and at Oklahoma State in general. I love the forthcoming of the Colin Oliver situation. I love the honesty behind some of the offensive and, and defensive limitations that we've had. And now that they've been voiced, I think it's very safe to assume they have been voiced extremely loudly all the way across the board. All of the coaches in the Oklahoma State offices are probably carrying a little bit of a different stress level today, as they should. Mike Gundy seems to be on a little bit more of a war path than he's ever been on before. And honesty is obviously a big part of it. That's also why we're seeing an uptick in recruiting. And I think it's potentially going to get even better because of things like this. And after feasting on the hogs, Mike Gundy had to start his press conference by feeding the dogs. He talks about the flair, players not flinching, right? which is 100% realistic. What happened in the first half was not the same thing as happened in the second half. It's a tale of two entirely different games. And you have to have this maturity, this seniority, and this leadership to guide you through something like that. Years past, Oklahoma State, doesn't finish that game or we find a way to lose that game this is seems to be a new leaf of oklahoma state and i'm here for it is it going to be a cause for concern obviously it has to be to some degree but i think that concern is being alleviated a little bit there is concern on a lot of areas we've heard about the colin oliver Colin Oliver injury, he's going to be out at least a month and a half, two months, which means he could be ready to play at the tail end of the season, get us ready for the playoffs and the conference title game, but it depends on the rehab go. Speaking of rehab, Justin Wright's rehab did not go very swimmingly, and unfortunately, we are now seeing that um, he's just got to keep going through rehab throughout the entirety of the season, so he's going to be out. That's two linebackers down. Thankfully, this is a depth situation, the depth that I've been preaching all offseason season. It's having the opportunity now to shine a little bit more. And I know Dijon Stribling was a little under the weather, but with that being said, I'm a little frustrated that we didn't see more I.O. show to Mike King or Talon Shetron. I know Talon is on the other side of the ball, but we also know that he's been cross-trained to do a multitude of things. So if, if A.O. isn't in there and Talon isn't in there and Dijon's not feeling well, I, I, don't, I don't know what we're doing. OB. Azegbo is not a surprise. Shout out to all the regulars, a.k.a. regulators here on the show. You guys know good and daggone well that we've been talking about Obi Azegbo for quite some time, just like we've been high on the Gannon Brian Nardo horse. But just like Leon Johnson, it was something that was very visible throughout the course of the spring and the fall. And again, even if it's a small sample size, you have a decent understanding of whether this guy is going to be able to flourish in this system or not. Leon Johnson was somebody that I identified very early on last season. Io showed him my king wasn't somebody that was necessarily identified me. This was just him climbing up the depth chart. So I know we want to redshirt him. I know we don't want to go through the Leon Johnson situation again with Io showed my king if we don't have to. But again, if John Stribling is a little bit under the weather and Io's been pushing, well, let him get in the game or give us more talent, Shetron. 
Um, you know, speaking of Obi Zegbo and Leon Johnson, I do think that some of Mike Gundy's context or comments were taken a little bit out of context. When he's talking about them being inexpensive, that doesn't mean they're cheap. That doesn't mean that Todd Bradford and everybody didn't do their due diligence to make sure that they were, they were going to find somebody that was going to be able to you know, roll into the locker room and adjust to Stillwater, the campus, the classes, and all of that fairly seamlessly. It goes far beyond just simply grabbing talent. It goes far beyond simply grabbing talent with some extra money. The identification process of, at Oklahoma State has always been remarkable, which is why in recruiting we can be in the 50s, 60s, 70s and still continuously pump out 10 win season and, and compete for Big 12 titles. Regardless of what you want to say about the past Mike Gundy and, and, and the new Mike Gundy, there is a drastic difference, and I think it's going to pay massive dividends in the locker room, even though we do have some concerns we'll get to here in a, a segment two. I think that the cause for concern is extremely lessened, especially now. He knows that, uh, you know, without Leon Johnson, the last season's probably a bust. I mean, he said it himself, I think, multiple times, that if Leon Johnson didn't make that decision and step up in the way that he did, we don't have the season that we have. We don't end up in Arlington. Again, another layer of honesty from Mike Gundy that we all appreciate. I would say Obi as much as the same. Now, I will say, even I was slightly offended Okay, by calling anybody a Ford Taurus, don't do that. Don't do a, a Ford Taurus. Come on, man. Um, I'm American made, sure, I'm with it, but a Ford Taurus is not a good comp. He also talked about how outcoached we were, and he's 100% dead on. I mean, we have a running joke that Rashad Owen, or I'm sorry, Rashawn Woods is still open. Well, we now have a running joke that every Arkansas wide receiver is still open, as is Griffin, Flippin, Wildy at South Dakota State, who put up 150 yards on us. I still firmly believe in Brian Nardo. I firmly believe in this defense, but we are missing some pieces. We don't have something working the right way, whether it's going to be a shift from Kendall Daniels, a shift from Obi Zegbo, or if we're going to maneuver, um, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe Jeff Robertson around a little bit more. We do have some versatility at the linebacker spot, and we have a significant amount of depth. So I'm still not necessarily concerned about what the loss of Colin Oliver is going to end up being in the totality of the season. Is it a loss? Of course. I'm not ridiculous. But I think that Obi Zegbo and Kendall Daniels, if he's going to play that more simplified role, could be very beneficial to Oklahoma State this season. We have receivers running wide open. My dude, Brian Nardo, needs to get it fixed because it is fixable. That was another beautiful thing that Mike Gunny hinted at. None of the things that you see on film, even though we did get burnt way too often, and not all of it was communication. Some of it was just athleticism and speed. But you have to find a way to counterbalance that as a coordinator. So if you know you're playing a team that's significantly faster than you, you have to find more innovative ways to get stops. But again, the turnovers are a way of doing that. So I hate the bend but don't break, but that's kind of what it is. And the breaking part is whenever we get the turnovers. Are we going to be able to live and die on turnovers like in 2011? I don't think so. At some point in time, we're going to have to buckle this thing down, just like at some point in time, we're going to have to buckle down the run game. It is kind of wild to me to think that Charlie Dickey is having so many difficulties here when the Charlie Dickey that was famous at Kansas State for getting a hat on a hat, regardless of the numbers, the defense could put 11 dudes in the box, 10 dudes in the box, one deep free safety. Colin Klein could yell over his O-line and tell them precisely what the play was going to be, and they'd still get four yards. That stuff needs to be implemented here at Oklahoma State. And again, there are some things that are cause for concern, just like there's some things that I think are being blown out of proportion and aren't all that concerning whatsoever. But I will tell you, you may have a cause for concern if you have some boredom in your day. And college football is inevitably right around the corner here. But while you get prepared, have some fun. Play the best game in the land right now in Ultimate College Football HC. Football time is here, dreaming season is here, and it's time for you to have a dream season with Ultimate College Football HC. Whenever you're just trying to get some uh, get some stuff done in the day, you're just trying to pass some time, or you're trying to expand your legacy as a coach or just improve your play calling, Ultimate Football Head Coach has the opportunity of a lifetime here for you. 
I want to tell you all that this is a brand new mobile game that uh, I think you're going to love because it's football related and you get to be the dude, right? This is an amazing game and a simulation that lets you step into the shoes of being a head coach and leading your favorite college football program to glory. Like, could you imagine actually being the head coach of Oklahoma State? Replacing the legend of Mike Gundy may not be easy to do, but from recruiting players to hiring staff and overseeing training and handling all of the scholarships, you literally control every crucial detail of your program. It's all in your hands, and the success is all up to you. The question is, will you be able to handle it? Are you ready? If you are, get squared away today. The responsible thing to do would be to download this game and figure out your strategy that will determine the success of your football team, your season, and shape the future of the legacy that you are building. Ultimate College Football HC is completely free, has no ads, and it's 100% playable offline. You can play on the go and do whatever you need to expand your profile. Of course, we're giving you a special offer. For Locked On Oklahoma State fans, use a promo code Locked On CFB, all caps, inside the game store to receive a free boost to your program. Make sure that you take advantage of this perk as it'll get your team off to a strong start. Build your legacy today. Download the game. Just visit ultimate-cfb.com. That is ultimate-cfb.com. Or I'll look it up in all of your app source. Ultimate College Football HC. This is your opportunity to begin your coaching legacy today. You can begin your coaching legacy. Mike Gundy has a long coaching legacy, and uh, the cause for concerns are there. He did mention a multitude of times some disgruntlement with the offensive approach, especially in the first half. Again, this is a new layer of Mike Gundy. There has been times in the past where it felt like Gundy and Dunn kind of took little baby jabs at each other in post-game press conferences, nothing over the top. But this is finally, finally the time that we're getting a little bit more of a transparent Mike Gundy whenever it comes to the deficiencies in the offensive play calling. Now, the question could be asked, why is this just now coming to fruition? Has Mike Gundy been frustrated with Casey Dunn in the past? Clearly, he hasn't been as frustrated with Casey Dunn as we have been in the fan base. I do know that there's uh, you know, some people that think that Casey Dunn is, is, is a good coordinator. I think that that's an absolutely preposterous statement. Although I will say the second half adjustments were awesome. But the scripting in the beginning has been problematic. It was problematic last year. If Mike Gundy was one of the dudes who stepped in last season to rectify the, the difficulties we're having on offense, it appears as though we're getting to that, that level yet again. So the CEO approach that he has earned and deserves now, he almost cannot do because unfortunately he's put in a position where he needs to now micromanage. And if he got into Casey Dunn, and by the, the amount of conversations he's had in regards to the offense and how inept it was and how ridiculous it was to be so inept in that first half, because it wasn't rocket science, right? And I've said this a hundred times, I'll say it a hundred more, coaching at any level it's not rocket science yeah it is very very difficult because you have to handle uh, so many things and you have to wear so many hats but a coach's job a coach's only job at any level is to put the players in a position to be successful that's all whether it be physiologically get you to a, to a spot where nobody can outrun you nobody can outlift you nobody can you know, move you or if it's going to be more cerebral based and you're going to put you in positions to maybe deceive a quarterback or, or cheat a, a wide receiver's route options. Those are all things that can be worked on. This concern seems to be something that Mike Gunny is addressing. And if he was able to rip Casey Dunn 17 ways from Sunday, which we can all hope and pray definitely happen. The same has to be said for Brian Nardo. You cannot give up 630 or 600 some odd yards at any game at any point in time and it be considered a success. Even with the turnovers that did ultimately end up leading to the W, just like we had some offensive production in the second half that led getting a W. But this is years now 
where we haven't played a full four quarters. When we play two quarters of excellent football, we are an excellent football team. Whenever we play, I don't know, discombobulated to start the game, it doesn't make sense. Square peg in a round hole. You saw it with some of the play calling of Casey Dunn. You also see it in some of the limitations of Alan Bowman. Throughout the course of the spring and the fall, we did see a maturation process of him being better in the pocket, having better pocket presence and better pocket awareness. But this game was a little different. Now, we didn't see Alan Crawdaddy Bowman, so maybe he's upgraded to a new nickname. Maybe perhaps we should call him Alan Backfoot Bowman from here on out. Again, whenever things are cut and dry for him, he's fine. But even when he has four, five, six seconds, which is like an eternity for a quarterback in a pocket, even then he does have a propensity at times to lean on that back foot a little bit too much. But it's kind of hard to rip him for it because there's times that he leans off the back foot and he throws a crazy pass that ends up being sports center worthy. But I think I would say by and large percentage when he does go off the back foot, it's more negative than positive. I do know that there's times he throws some epic dimes off of that back foot. But again, it's unnecessary. If you're talking about run blocking, we are doing terrible. If you're talking about pass pro, we are literally one of the best, if not the best in the country. Teams are not getting to Allen Bowman. Not Arkansas, not SDSU, not hardly anybody. So his decision making... Okay, he did throw into double coverage quite often. We did have multiple defenders set in spots, basically anticipating where the route was going to be. And sure enough, there's the route, there's the ball, which almost cost us uh, a couple different interceptions. That's a limitation. Five yards and out, right? This is one of the routes, especially if you're throwing to the opposite hash, that the NFL is looking for. Can you make this throw? If you can make this throw, five yard out, 10 yard out, 15 yard out, especially to the opposite hash, from an arm strength perspective, you're probably going to have the opportunity to play at the next level. Maybe not the NFL, maybe the CFL, UFL, whatever it may be. But if you can't complete five and outs and 10 and outs and 15 yard comebacks, you have no shot at the NFL. Call a spade a spade. And unfortunately for the maturation process we have seen from Alan Bowman in the pocket, this game was an indication that sometimes it's not always enough. Just like this game is an indication that sometimes it's not always about Mike Gundy's decision-making. We do know that he always chooses the veteran quarterback. But you can sense his frustration. Obviously, I feel like his frustration is not necessarily with Alan Bowman. It's more with Casey Dunn. But it does have to bring up the question, is Alan Bowman the right guy to lead us to the CFP promised land? As I would said in the preseason, I felt like Alan Bowman's good enough to get us to the Big 12 title game. I didn't know that he was good enough to win the Big 12 title game. And even though we did see some things early on, you know, spring, fall, in game one that, that were encouraging, there are still some bad habits that he clearly is not going to be able to correct. So is this a stubbornness by Mike Gundy issue? Or is this a stubbornness by Casey Dunn? Because I'm sure Tim Rattay would like to have a little bit more of a developmental respect. And yes, we are going to cover the new quarterback commit jet new tomorrow, but it's going to get its own segment. We're going to do a little bit of a film stuff. So we're going to give it its own space. It deserves it. But there's a lot of things that are cause for concern. And I'm glad that Mike Gundy is calling it out. They did run free all over the field and we couldn't stop them for most of the game. Our route concepts at some times were predictable enough that the Arkansas defenders would double team it and sit and wait on it while we had other receivers on the outside that were not double teamed. Therefore, Arkansas kind of knew what was coming. This is some of the issue with Casey Dunn. The innovative offenses that Oklahoma State used to have are a thing of a pass. The innovative offenses, by and large, in the Big 12 are to some degree a thing of the pass as well. So you have to rely on the defense. We typically need to be relying on the run game. Having Alan Bowman put the game on his shoulders and, and, and you know, find a way to make a win, I still don't think it's going to happen. Just like UCF last season. The Texas game is a little bit different, right? They they were pretty advanced. Arkansas was 
the the next closest advancement we've seen. So that does kind of hurt the heart because I like to pick on the SEC as much as possible, but Arkansas just proved that there is a, a little bit of a differentiation still yet with the Big 12 and the SEC. We had a lot of ground to make up because of the cause for concerns, but here's my underlying point here. The fact that Mike Gundy is calling these things out is less concerning for me now. Because if he's talking about it publicly, again, you know good and daggone well, he had to have ripped Casey Dunn 17 ways from Sunday. And again, I think the same can be said for Brian Nardo. Both would be deserved. This is the umpteenth time that we've had a discussion of, well, if we did it in the first half, we'd have won by 30. At this point in time, we might as well spot teams 20 points and just begin the game after halftime. Because the, the first half has been pretty ugly for a few years now. And, you know, when the scripting doesn't work, typically that's when things unravel, which we will give credit where credit is due to Casey Dunn and Brian Nardo for making the adjustments. But Mike Gundy's frustration is valid. Why does it take this many games and this many second half adjustments for us to get stuff right? Why can't we just get it right from the get go? So the pressure that Mike Gundy is now putting on the coordinators, it better show up on the field. I mean, I pity the fool who cheers on Tulsa this weekend. I don't think Tulsa's a bad ball club, but I think Mike Gundy is out for blood. Mike Gundy is going to force Casey Dunn and Brian Nardo to be more innovative and creative or to suffer the consequences. Don't know what those consequences are going to be. I think it's fair that uh, we can all say that Casey Dunn probably should have been fired a couple years ago. More often than not, most places would have let him go. Even if you date back to the epic 2021 season, those offensive production numbers were absolutely anemic. We did not play offense for three quarters a lot then. Thankfully, we had the greatest defense of all time at Oklahoma State. If not the, it's number two. So that D was able to bail us out over and over and over again. The offensive production was enough at times to get W's, but it was never enough to go out and win a ball game. We had to have the defense, and he called plays that way, which was very frustrating. I think a lot of us thought that that was Mike Gundy, you know, sometimes getting on the headset and, and kiboshing things, which I know did happen, but maybe it didn't happen enough. He was giving Casey Dunn a little bit too much freedom, which is why we were so offensively anemic in 2021 and 2022. 2023 was obviously a mixed bag, some good, some bad. A lot of the good was Ollie Gordon. Now we face a team that actually shuts down Ollie Gordon, and we don't have a lot of answers. The fact that Mike Gunny's addressing all of this and putting this kind of pressure on them alleviates some of the concern for me. We'll have to see it on the field we'll have to see it be for real but as for now it's a pretty encouraging sign and i'm pretty excited about it just like i'm always excited to uh i don't know pick me up whenever i need it with five hour energy of course if you're on the road and you're trying to go catch the cowboys over the weekend make sure that you have the best pick me up in the game Long drives, well, they're, they're that name for a reason. They're long drives. And long drives typically aren't all that fun. You get tired. You get complacent. Sometimes you get discombobulated, especially if you're driving around with Mike Gunny and Ollie Gordon. But nonetheless, five-hour energy is the right pick-me-up that you need in your game. Whether you have a long list of things to do, DIY projects at home, five-hour energy is the right shot you need in your system. It can help you knock everything off of your list. And you know with the Cardiac Cowboys, there's a lot of ups, there's a lot of downs. Your blood pressure might be going crazy every single game, so grab a five-hour energy. Maybe that'll help you stay a little bit more alert to watch all of your favorite games and to deal with all of the, the craziness that comes with Cowboy football at times. If you stay up late watching all the intensity, you need a little help. Five-hour energy is the shot that will help you, and it'll help you get your morning started the next day as well. Five-hour energy is the bee's knees, as the kids would say. So get some in your system today. Five-hour energy is the brand hardworking people like you all have trusted for well over 20 years now. It allows people to be more alert, more energized, and feeling like they can get through a busy, hectic, crazy day. 
You need to stock up on money-saving multi-packs to ensure that you never run out of this deliciousness. Whether you're into the 12-pack, 24-pack, you look at all the crazy flavors like watermelon, tropical burst, grape, and berry, plus many more. You can mix and match, put them all together, and create the dream team and have it delivered to your house. You need to go today to 5hourenergy.com. That is the number 5hourenergy.com to get some 5-Hour Energy products in your ASAP. You can use the promo code locked on CFB to receive 20% off your order. This offer is only valid through September 30th on one order and cannot be used with other promotions. The code is not good on subscription orders as well. You need to go today to five hour energy, get the right pick me up, get the best in the game. and You won't regret it. As you get on the road, come check out the Cowboys. Oklahoma State is being doubted by many. And again, shout out to the regulars, AK regulators out here. Help me out. Help me in collecting receipts. Because there's a lot of people out there talking about how terrible Oklahoma State is, which is kind of crazy to me. This was a must win for perception. It was a must win for recruiting. It was a must win to kind of build the anticipation, anticipation of the season. I know words are hard for me. But then you have some people out there talking about how Tulane is better than Arkansas. An AAC team is better than the SEC team. Even if you wanted to pretend that Arkansas is the very, 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 very bottom of the SEC, to say that it's same as an ACC team that lost Willie Fritz, that lost their star linebacker, lost their defensive end, lost all of their coaches, it seems just slightly preposterous to me. Just like uh, the the Monty show. I know that their credibility has taken a massive hit. And if you look at the numbers, it's kind of indicative of that. But clearly, they're trying to revive some of their credibility by tanking it even more. It's, It's crazy. The conversation that they're having is that Oklahoma State is terrible and Oklahoma State doesn't have any talent and uh, the, there is no three deep. There is no star wide receiver. There is nobody really on the roster that's good enough to play in the NFL. This is the same individual, one of these individuals that was propagating at the top of every mountaintop in Pac-12 country that the Pac-12 is going to survive. And uh, people like me and Greg Swain were just pumping Big, big 12 and non bull crap. And the Pac-12 was never going to go to the, the Big 12 because the Pac-12 was so superior. And he's been hearing from insiders, and they've been hearing from insiders, kind of like Tony Altamore, that the Pac-12 is going to survive, and it's going to thrive, and they're going to make more money in the Big 12. And then even on the last day of reckoning, they were sitting there pumping up how great the Pac-12 was. And then when that fell apart, then they're pumping up how Washington State and Oregon State should be in the conference. Like, we get it. You're a George Klyovkov puppet, and George Klyovkov doesn't really have a place in sports anymore. Neither do you. You're trying to piggyback off of the success that Oklahoma State is having by trying to trash them. This is not new. Unfortunately, you're seeing a lot of people out here talk about how Oklahoma State is trash. Nobody's talking about the fact that um, if you watch football, you grade film, and you do it for a living, Arkansas actually played pretty good. If you go back and look at the Big 12 title game against Texas, it's kind of reminiscent of the size, speed, and skill that Arkansas has. Collect these receipts because at the end of the season, we can have this wonderful conversation about everybody who doubted Oklahoma State and said that we were trash and says that Arkansas is mid and a, a lower-tier SEC program, which they were last year. They won four games. But again, it's about eyeballs, and I'm not talking about the eyeball test. I'm talking about just watching the game of football and studying film for a living. If you do that, you can see that Arkansas does produce some of the same things that Texas did in the Big 12 title game. Give credit where credit's due. That's all I'm saying, because we are collecting these receipts. All right, y'all. Tomorrow, we'll talk a little bit more about Jet. Sorry I didn't have to get the time to get to the film. Um, We'll squeeze it in. And we have a Tulsa guest coming on Friday, so make sure you check that out. So much more coming. All right, y'all. As always, you know I love you. God bless. Go Pokes. Thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen here in Lockdown, Oklahoma State. You could be anywhere. So happy you choose to be here. Like it if you like the daggone thing. Dislike it if you don't, because that's okay, too. More importantly, share, comment, and subscribe. A podcast some people out there, the bricks, the brother, butter, the bread. I can't speak. You know what to do. Hit the stars, leave a review. <laughs> Later, my taters.